Hi, my name is Donald Stater. I'm a senior pain management and opioid policy advisor with the Colorado Hospital Association. I'm also an emergency physician who practices at Swedish Medical Center. Today, Colorado Hospital Association is proud to present our series on procedures that you can use in the emergency department to reduce pain and also reduce opioid usage. In this video, we're going to learn about occipital nerve blocks. Occipital nerve blocks are a great way to both treat and diagnose occipital neuralgia. And really, I use these in any patient who has a headache that's made worse by palpation of the occipital nerve, a nerve that's implicated in many types of headache variants. To learn about occipital nerve blocks, we're going to need Matt. Matt is a patient of ours who's had a headache for around three weeks. And while talking to Matt, you get the distinct feeling that he might be having occipital neuralgia. He describes his headache as posterior. He describes it on one side of his head. He says that oftentimes it feels extremely sharp. And you confirm this by palpating and asking Matt, Matt, when I push right here on the back of your head, does that make your headache worse? Yes. Yes? Okay. Matt is a perfect candidate for an occipital nerve block. So let's grab the items you'll need to perform the procedure. Bupivacaine 0.25% or lidocaine 1%, a 5 milliliter syringe, an 18 gauge needle to drop medications, a 1.5 inch 27 gauge needle to use on the patient, an alcohol pad or chloroprep, and a pair of gloves. The risk of an occipital nerve block is minimal if done correctly. These include allergy to the medication, localized skin reaction or infection, injury to the occipital artery and resultant hematoma, injury to the nerve and resultant numbness to the scalp or neck. These should be discussed with the patient in either verbal or written consent obtained prior to performing the procedure. Extra caution because of the risk of hematoma should also be taken with patients on anticoagulants. For clinicians new to occipital nerve blocks, a brief review of the anatomy is really important. So, at the back of the head, there's a few landmarks that you should be familiar with. The first is the inion, which comes off the, ox the occiput. The second is the mastoid process. Now, the greater occipital nerve lives between these two areas. The greater occipital nerve comes off C2, C3 and has two branches. The first of which is the greater occipital nerve, which is usually found around a thumb space laterally to where the inion is. So, for example, here, do you have worsening pain when I push there? Yes. Yes, okay. The greater occipital nerve, the other way to find it, is by feeling for the occipital artery. So in this patient, right here is his occipital artery, and that means that the nerve should be right medial to it, right in that area where he felt pain before. The lesser occipital nerve is actually lateral to that. So oftentimes, with patients too, Knowing your brief anatomy, you can ask them where they hurt the most. And the best guide to where that nerve is comes from where there's maximal pal pain to palpation. So do you hurt most right there, Matt? Yes. Okay, how about over here? Does that hurt as much? Not quite as much. Okay, and here? Yes, still. Yes, okay. So in these types of patients with occipital neuralgia, you can have inflammation to one or both of the nerves. And fortunately, it's really easy to perform a nerve block of both of them with one injection. So you drop your bupivacaine, you put on your 27 gauge, one and a half inch needle, and then you position the patient so that they're ready to receive an occipital nerve block. You position the patient by having them sit on the side of the bed and oftentimes by putting their head in the palm of your hands. So Matt, can you go ahead and put your head in your palm and then put your head down like that? So this is a good position where you can access all the nerves. The next step is you'll identify the nerve and you'll get ready to anesthetize. So Matt, remind me again, here's your, here's your inion. Does it hurt worse when I push right there? Yes. Yes, okay. So this is where the greater occipital nerve lives. Again, where the patient has most pain with palpation is where you're going to inject. So you'll clean that area right where the greater occipital ridge is and you'll get ready to inject. Now, when you inject, You'll put the 27 gauge needle right under the scalp, a little pressure, and then you'll start injecting fluid. Oftentimes you'll fan your fluid, and it's okay if you go deep enough to touch the, touch the skull. And now to get the lesser occipital nerve, you'll actually go laterally. And that way you'll get the lesser occipital nerve with one injection. You'll go ahead and infuse Marcaine into this entire area to make sure that you've properly anesthetized both those nerves. 
Now, it's not uncommon that patients will have pain with palpation of both occipital nerves, and in which case it's okay to do bilateral occipital nerve blocks. So after the procedure is completed, I'll often give the patient a gauze and ask them to hold pressure in the area where the injection has been preceded. Matt, can you go ahead and put your hand up here and just hold this with light pressure to your scalp? Okay. After an occipital nerve block, we expect a patient to have relief of their pain around five to 10 minutes after the procedure is completed. As you can see, occipital nerve blocks are easy to perform and are a great adjunct for the treatment of headache and especially for occipital neuralgia. You can find out more about the Colorado Alto Project and different procedures at www.cha.com alto. And finally, on behalf of the Colorado Hospital Association, thank you for the care that you provide your patients.